Last November, when Jack Dorsey announced his stepping down as Twitter's CEO, the value of the company's stock initially leapt. When Twitter announced Purag Agarwal as his replacement, however, it fell again, as quickly as it had risen. How come? Let's see what we can find out about the new guy. A search for official photos of him turns up exactly one. Compare that to his predecessor Jack Dorsey. What we know. He was born in Rajasthan, is married and has a son. Agarwal holds a bachelor's degree in computer science and engineering from the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, and a PhD in computer science from Stanford University. He had worked at AT&T, Microsoft and Yahoo before joining Twitter as an engineer in 2011, when the company had fewer than 1,000 employees, making him a true Twitter veteran. Before his promotion to CTO in 2017, Purag spent six years working as a software engineer specialised in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Why is it so hard to find information on him? It seems he's not much of a social media user and likes to keep to himself. The internet never forgets though, especially when it comes to controversy. Tweet something and 10 years later when you are at the height of your career, someone will dig it out and use it against you. Agarwal once tweeted, if they are not going to make a distinction between Muslims and extremists, then why should I distinguish between white people and racists? This appears to suggest all white people are racist. After digging up the 12-year-old tweet, followers started trolling Agarwal on social media. In fact, he had been quoting a comedian who had poked fun at American racism and Islamophobia. Agarwal himself clarified in the thread that he was only quoting the comedian Asif Mandvi from The Daily Show. Agarwal faced more criticism online after internet users scrutinised his LinkedIn profile and claimed that gaps in his CV were fishy. Upon closer inspection, however, these were clearly during the time he was pursuing his PhD. What's in store for him? Agarwal will receive an annual salary of $1 million. He'll be eligible for a bonus of 150% of his base salary. And he will also receive performance-based stock units worth $12.5 million. Sounds like a lot of money, but the pressure for Agawal is also high. Twitter wants to increase its daily average users by 50% and double its revenue. The company continues to face ongoing issues concerning user growth, advertising revenue and its stock price, while other social networks like TikTok are on top. Pushing crypto could perhaps help Twitter's growth. Like his predecessor and friend Jack Dorsey, Agarwal is a fan of blockchain technology. All things blockchain at Twitter now have a home at Twitter Crypto. This division directly reports to Agarwal. As it currently stands, Twitter users can receive donations in cryptocurrencies. Soon, users will be able to verify and showcase their NFT collection in their own profile. Forging ahead with crypto is also a logical step. After all, a large part of the crypto community is on Twitter and does their networking there. Up until now, however, the platform hasn't played a role in the boom. One thing is clear, Agawa wants Twitter to move a lot faster under his reign. After taking the key position, he immediately got down to reorganising the company. Two top executives from the leadership team were dismissed straight off last year, Dudley Davis and Michael Montano. They were followed by two top-ranking members of the security team, Rinki Sethi and Peter Zatko, one of the most well-regarded hackers in the world. Since the start of his tenure, certain high-profile accounts have been shut down, including the private accounts of Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene and virologist Robert Malone for the alleged spread of misinformation on COVID-19. India and Twitter Freedom of speech plays a big role in Twitter's difficult relationship with the Indian government. Last year, the platform was asked to remove dozens of tweets that were critical of the government's response to COVID-19 and to block some 250 accounts linked to the farmers' protests against a series of agricultural reforms. Indian law allows the state to censor defamatory content. Non-compliance with government demands to delete content it considers illegal can result in jail time for employees of social media companies. Of Indian origin himself, it will be interesting to see how Agarwal tackles the issues of freedom of expression and censorship in the future. What tack will he take to ease tensions between the Indian government and Twitter? India is, after all, Twitter's third largest market, with around 24 million users. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and follow our channel for more videos like this one.